Welcome to the fifth video in our CC3D Revolution and Libre Pilot series. In this video, we're going to talk about the GPS flight modes. We've already added a GPS to the craft and got that working, but to get the GPS bits and pieces working as a flight mode, takes a little bit more. And luckily the Libra Pilot documentation is just getting to the point now where it's starting to become clear about what we need to do as pilots to set this up and get him working well. Now all of the stuff that we're going to be talking about here is covered in the Libre Pilot documentation. Now the documentation is at the web address. I'll actually put the couple of web addresses that we're looking at here in the description so you don't have to try and find them. If however you come to it and try and uh, click on those links and they don't work because the content's been moved, then Googling for things like GPS flight modes, Libre Pilot will usually find these pages. Now, as we've already seen in Libre Pilot itself, when we were setting up the craft, you can select up to six flight modes. And a lot of those flight modes for the revolution in Libre Pilot are to do with GPS. So we are gonna go through the GPS ones, as you can see here, going through position hold, course lock, all the way down to auto takeoff. But before we get into that level of detail, it's worthwhile us talking about some of the gotchas. GPS flight modes can be tricky to get working, and that's because a GPS relies on a solid magnetometer or compass to be able to figure out not only where it is in space, but also which way it's pointing so that it knows which corrective direction to go in to maintain its position. So having a magnetometer that's interfered with by the power system or by electromagnetic fields or anything, spells disaster for a solid GPS mode. And one of the ways that you can tell that the magnetometer isn't working very well is when it does this toilet bowling, which where it looks like it's going down a drain and prescribes bigger and bigger circles. Now we've actually put a video together that explains in much more detail why a magnetometer is important for GPS flight modes. I'll link to it here. As we're recording this video, there's a beta version of Libra Pilot coming that will allow us to attach an external compass, which is how other flight controllers like the APM and Pixhook do it, and that allows us to put that magnetometer up well out of the way of all the power system so that it isn't affected by any other part of the craft. And typically the way it's done is it's using a magnetometer that's part of something like a GPS, and that GPS is held up on a stalk. When you're doing the GPS bits and pieces, never start out with things like the GPS home. It's always better to test it with something like the GPS hold or the velocity roam that we're about to look at to make sure that the craft can not only orientate it and things like the attitude and altitude, compass, GPS and everything is working okay. And then once you can get those kind of GPS position hold features working, then you can move on to some of the more sophisticated ones. We're not going to actually demo the stuff in the video. We're going to wait until the code comes out for an external magnetometer because the magnetometer on mine, even though it's shielded, because it is so close to the power distribution system, is getting slightly affected. So I know mine won't work very well. So the first hold and the most simple is position hold. And this is a great one to start off with. It will maintain its position in 3D space. So what you're gonna do here is you're going to uh, click it into GPS hold, and then the craft will ignore your elevator and aileron control, and then try and maintain the GPS coordinates that it was at when you flicked it into the mode. This is great for the testing, as I've already said, but do make sure that you are ready to click it out of GPS position hold if it starts to drift dramatically, or the motors start misbehaving or anything, be ready to rescue it. It will allow you to yaw so you can turn around. So this might be quite nice if you want to park it in the sky, if you want to think of it like that, uh, have, with a camera on it and gently rotate 360 degrees to do panoramas, those kind of things this could be quite nice with. Now there's a couple of things that we're going to look at for uh, these setups. Now, although you can set up the modes as we've just seen in the Libra pilot screen. There are a couple of extra things that you need to do to make sure that the GPS modes are working. Now for position hold setup, you need to change the attitude estimation algorithm, which is a wonderfully long way of saying you go into at the attitude page, into settings, into attitude estimation algorithm, and then you select GPS navigation, INS 13 and save. Whenever you're doing any of the GPS stuff, you need to make sure that INS 13 is selected. And then obviously you need to add that flight mode to the switch, just like we were looking at before. So you go into the input page, flight mode switch, 
uh, settings and put position hold onto one of your flight mode positions on the flight mode switch for your radio. So this is quite straightforward, it isn't particularly tricky, but you do have to make sure that whenever you're using all the GPS bits and bobs, is you're selecting the GPS navigation INS13 as the attitude estimation algorithm. Next mode we'll look at then, a little bit more complicated, this is GPS course lock. Semi-autonomous mode, the craft will hold its current course and altitude. The interesting thing about this is that the controls then start to relate to how the compass is set up. So rather than it being around the orientation of the craft, so whichever way the craft is pointing, you know, if you push the stick forward, it will go forward. When you click it into this mode, it's a bit wacky in that the position is adjusted in the saved orientation. So what this means is the craft uses the heading when the mode was enabled and all the controls are relative to that heading when you activate the mode. This is one I'm struggling to see how I would actually use, to be honest. It's a slightly wacky one. Next one we'll look at is Velocity Roam. This is one that I definitely would use. This is GPS hold position, like we first saw at the very top of the presentation. This time now we're allowed to push it around with sticks and when we let go of the sticks, it'll stay in its position. I think GJI and a couple of other manufacturers have something similar. So this is hold position, but you can move it around. I really like this. This is like the GPS hold mode that was implemented in things like the Multiwii, and it's great because it means you can fly it around, and when you let go of the sticks, the thing just kind of wanders gently around one position in the sky, and uh, you can use the camera or gimbal or other bits and pieces as well. Next one is something called Home Leash. Again, a slightly more exotic one. Home Leash allows you to control the craft with your sticks, but the control input is always relative to your home position. So pitch forward will always make you go further away from your home position, irrespective of where it is around you, and pitch back will always bring it back. This is means that the orientation control input is always relative to where you're stood. This might be useful if you're learning or you're getting stuck and you are trying to fly it back to you and you're not sure what the orientation is. You can flick it into this mode and knowing that when you pull the stick back, it means it's going to fly back to you whichever way it's pointing. But apart from that, this is not one that I would use a lot. Next one is absolute position. Again, like the mode we looked at before, it is all about the compass point. So when you click it into absolute position, you can move it using the elevator and ailerons, yaw and everything else, but now it's all relative to the compass directions. So pitch forward, I put in the elevator to the top, will make it go north, putting it to the bottom will make it go south. So this is more useful, I think, for those uh, times when you're flying it using a map or the ground station software, or you're doing those kind of things, and you are trying to position the craft in 3D space, and what you're trying to do is park it over a particular position. Then we have return to base, one of my favorite modes. And this for me is the main reason why I'd add it to a craft. It allows me to bring the drone or multi-copter back to me in the event of a problem. So what you can do is set it up so that every time it arms, it saves that location as the home location. And then when you click into return to base, it will then climb to a preset altitude, defaults 10 meters, and then it will fly back to you. You might want to increase that height a little bit, 10 meters, isn't particularly high if you are in an area that has quite mature trees. This is one where I'd say you don't have a crack at this. This isn't the first GPS mode to have a go with. I would try something like the GPS position hold or velocity roam, make sure that it's working fine in that mode, and then once you're confident your system's okay, then have a crack at GPS flight mode. Now there's quite a few things that you need to set up in order for return to base to work. So it's worthwhile us taking a sidestep and just going through each of these individual steps. Now, all of these steps, again, are detailed in the Libra Pilot documentation. I'll put another link in the description so you can read up on it, but let me very quickly go through each of the steps here. First thing we have to do, of course, is make sure that the attitude estimation algorithm, gosh, that is still a mouthful, is the INS 13. Whenever you're using a GPS flight mode, it needs to be set as that. You need, of course, then to add that flight mode, the GPS return to base, to 
uh, a switch. I'd recommend that you have it at the very limit of your mode switch. That uh, tends to work for me so that in the event of an oh dear situation, I can hit that switch as hard as I can and drop it into the return to base position so that the craft will fly back, give me the best shot. And for those of you that like to set up failsafe, then you could consider having the failsafe in to return to home mode. So next thing we need to do then is set the return to home altitude offset. So we need to set that up. Again, default is 10. Uh, then we set the takeoff location mode. Now these are, the last two are the really important pieces for me. The, this one, it set off takeoff location mode is you want to be set it to arming location or first arming location. Now when we set the board up, we set a home location so that we could do things like the calibration routine. You want it set to arming location or first arming location. So when you arm the board at the flying field, wherever you take off from, those coordinates are stored as the GPS home location that it has to fly back with. That means, of course, that you have to make sure that you have a GPS 3D solid lock before you enter this mode, arm the board and take off. Last thing to do then at five is you need to set the return to base next command. You have two options. You can hold or land. Hold, it'll enter GPS hold mode when it gets above the home location. So it'll just sit there in the sky or land. It'll gently descend and then hit the ground. And that is the one that I would probably use. I tend to uh, like it to fly autonomously back, hit the ground and shut itself down. So you have to do each of those steps in order for the GPS return to home mode to work. And again, all of that is detailed in far more information in the Libra Pilot documentation. It's getting quite good now. The location to that is at the bottom, but I'll also pop it in the description. Last couple of flight modes get a little bit easier. We have the land and take off. Land is what we've just talked about. You can pop that at the end of the GPS return to base mode, or you can have it set as a separate mode. And what it'll do is gently sink to the ground. Uh, you have a landing velocity value, which dictates how quickly it sinks. Uh, I would say the default's reasonable for most things. Uh, if you find that it's coming down too fast, you can reduce that amount of meters per second. And then we have auto takeoff, which is the other way around, where it automatically takes off and maintains position hold um, to a particular takeoff height. Default's uh, two and a half meters, so it's just above head height. Again, you can also set how quickly it goes up and down. Last mode is path planner. Uh, this is one that we'll be able to have a look at later in the series when I've got my external magnetometer on the craft and I'm confident it is rock solid. This is a fully autonomous mode. So this is like auto in the APM Pix Racer or Pix Hawk world. And the craft will fly um, an uploaded path that you've loaded into memory. And at the end of the flight plan, um, it'll go into position hold. Um, hopefully when we get to that point as we're setting it up we'll be able to do things like return to base as the last command and that'll mean that it'll fly back to us when it's finished doing what it has to do. Again don't try this as your first GPS mode. Make sure that GPS position hold or velocity roam is absolutely solid. Make sure that modes like the GPS return to base are working consistently and well before you try something like path planner. And again later in the series we'll look at path planner, how you create and upload the path and how that all works. So hopefully that's interesting for those of you that are interested in the modes. Have a look at the Libra Pilot documentation and keep watching for later videos in the series. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.